Moving on to item number five, public hearings. First item is uh, at 317 Acacia Avenue. This is a request to, for a use permit to allow the construction of a new home which increases the gross floor area of an existing home by greater than 50% and exceeds the 0.55 FAR guidelines per section 12230B1 and 12230B2 of the San Bruno Municipal Code. Staff report, please. Thank you and good evening. As stated, the applicant has applied for a use permit to construct a new home that increases the gross floor area of the existing home by greater than 50% and exceeds the 0.55 FAR guideline. The site is located on the west side of Acacia Avenue. Um, the site is 5,000 square feet, measuring 50 feet wide by 100 feet deep. The site was previously developed with a two-story single-family dwelling. Um, I would like to point out that a building permit was issued earlier this year, March 2012, for dry rot and foundation repair. Um, the scope of work was exceeded and a majority of the second floor was demolished. Um, as such, more than 50% of the exterior walls were removed, therefore this is considered new construction. That triggers two things. It triggers fire sprinklers for the entire house. It also, um, the applicant will be subject to the Cal Green Tier 1 requirements. Um, as stated, the noose, the, uh, the proposal consists of uh, construction of a two-story home, which will consist of three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and a two-car detached garage. All in all, there will be 2,470 square feet of living area with a 425 detached garage. The Architects Review, Architects Review Committee reviewed the project at their December meeting. At that meeting, they did forward the project onto the Planning Commission with two specific recommendations. One recommendation was to increase um, the distance between the detached garage and the back edge of the home. Um, the other recommendation was to ensure that the front porch or that the front porch steps were not encroaching into the front setback area. Since that time, the applicant has updated the plans and has incorporated both recommendations. Um, as stated, a use permit is required for this project. Um, as the proposal results in more than 50% expansion and exceeds the 0.55 FAR guideline. Um, staff does find that the proposal is consistent with the neighborhood and we do find that it is consistent with the residential design guidelines. The applicant has incorporated a number of um, facade articulation techniques that are outlined within the residential design guidelines. Specifically, they have set back in the second story from the first story below. Additionally, they are incorporating a number of exterior materials which help break up the mass of the structure. The first floor will consist of hardy plank horizontal siding. The second floor will consist of hardy plank shingles. And the front elevation, the top portion of the front elevation will consist of hardy plank um, board and batten finish. The proposal meets all other development standards of the zoning district. Um, I would also like to point out that the Applicant will be reusing the front porch, so we do find that adds um, additional architectural interest and helps break up the mass from the front elevation further. Staff did send a courtesy notice and the required 300-foot notice. Um, we did meet with the adjacent property owners. Really, they just want to learn more about the specific entitlements um, that were being proposed before us tonight. Um, additionally, they want to go over the approval process, and staff also um, reviewed the residential design guideline requirements. Overall, they were supportive of the design and recommended or in support of the project. Overall, staff supports the proposal and we do recommend that the planning commission approve the use permit request subject to findings of fact 1 through 7 and conditions of approval 1 through 27. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Through the chair. Commissioner? Uh, when you were describing the uh, demolition that was done after the March 26 permit, you mentioned the entire second story was demolished, but you didn't mention anything about the first story. Does that mean the report is wrong? A, por a portion of the first story does remain, so the front porch remains and two side walls currently rem remain as well today. So the majority of the majority of the home has okay. been demolished. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions for staff? Is the, thank you. Is the applicant present? Could you take the podium? State your name and your uh, and tell us about your project. 
My name is Jason Tran. I'm the representative of Maria Tam, who is the property owner of 317 Acacia Avenue. And uh, I'm here today to give you a little bit of the, uh, I, Matt have presented the, the, project, the propose, proposed project. The only three things that I'd like to point out is that this, this existing house is a Dutch uh, Gambio colonial style built in 1907 and what we're proposing is a similar architecture uh, house and the there's three important points that I like to point out that is number one is we are salvaging as Matt mentioned the uh, existing porch because we think that has that would signif uh, signify uh, in also a demarcation of the original house so that's, and that's one reason that we like to salvage that porch and integrate that to the proposed structure. And at the same time, as Matt mentioned again, it also helped breaking up the mass and give a better proportion to the main elevation, which we, as architects, we like to, uh, we like to see that more often when for new development. Secondly, the, um, the second floor originally was not habitable anyway and we were actually going to propose to replace the second floor because the gam gambrel um, uh, structure is too low on both ends so when you're actually in the bedroom to the to the outside edge of the building it's only six foot six tall and half of the room is is under uh, according to the new code is not habitable space because you know, the new code requires that you need a minimum of seven foot six for a habitable uh, uh, space. So, so we, we are proposing to replace that with a simple uh, gable, gable roof, and it's also in alignment with the existing surroundings. <coughs> and thirdly, is the, uh, the proposed structure is also in alignment and respects the surroundings by using the similar materials as you mentioned, uh, the, the sidings, the hardy board, and the shingles. So I'd like to make sure that, you know, do we have, we are respecting the surroundings and the original architecture of the house. And what we're proposing is in alignment with everything else. Thank you. Thanks. Are there any questions for uh, the applicant? Through the chair. Uh, yes. There was uh, a lot more demolition done than was permitted. Yes. Which indicates, I think, is that because the contractor was out of control, or how did that happen? My understanding. I mean, it was more than you planned yes. to do. Right? My understanding from uh, reported from my client is that there was an accident occurred in the at the site that forced the demolition to exceed the what it what was permitted so what that means I I don't know the whole detail of the of the incident did that did that answer your question no <laughs> through the chair Commissioner. Um, it, based on our previous conversation so that everyone knows you came into this project much later after that construction had been, or deconstruction had been done, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Through the chair. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the staff aware of what occurred in the accident, or, I mean, was it, I mean, it sounds kind of vague, that's why I'm just Yeah, trying so to what, what that signified was it actually forced the plan, planner to go into the discovery of the existing house, whether there's a, other uh, historical significance, and correct me if I'm wrong. So what that did was we actually had the project on hold for a while so that Matt can do his diligence and go into the, the exercise of discoveries. And you can well, chime in. I'm kind of curious. Is that the same thing as well? So to yeah. answer your first question, I, I'm unaware of why the home was demolished. All I know is that the second floor was demolished. I don't know the specific reason why. Um, due to its age and architectural characteristics, 
staff did prepare a request for a proposal. Um, we received various proposals from historic consultants to analyze the project. It was analyzed and it was determined that this or that the pre-existing structure was not um, subject or was not eligible for listing on the California Register. Um, I have a couple questions for the applicant. Um, yes. A couple of your green um, uh, green features. Yes. One of them is the um, the rooftop PVs. Yes. Uh, I don't see that on the plans. Were you, uh, were you going to indicate where they are going to be located? Whether whether they're going to be tilted or they're going to follow the slope of the of the roof? Most I mean, likely, it's going to follow the slope of the roof. Okay. Right, yes. Right now, we're still exploring that option. Okay, so you haven't quantified as, as to how much PVs you'll be putting on this property? That's correct. Okay. Uh, the second uh, question was that I don't see any space for a water heater, so are you planning on installing a uh, there is actually on demand? A there is actually a water heater space right next to the uh, washer, which is on the first floor, right behind the bathroom. Behind the bathroom? Oh. Right, right, adjacent or across from the bathroom, there is a water heater and the uh, washer dryer stack. Okay. So you're not planning on installing any instantaneous not at water this point. heater? No. Okay. Through in the chair. Commissioner? It actually says that in the area you talked about, it says furnace and washer dryer. And that's the Again, that's where the water heater is going to be as well. For the in the exact same place that you already have two other pieces of equipment or three other pieces. And there's yeah. So there's a there's a washer dryer, and then there's the furnace, and then in that same location is where we're going to propose to put a water heater. In the closet. In the closet. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't you have to separately enclose the water heater? Yes. So there's, there's also another, uh, another closet right adjacent to that. Okay, let me look at this. There's two closets across from each other. Yeah, so there's a closet right next to the washer dryer. Right. That could be the place for the water heater. So you're going to sacrifice the entire closet space for the water heater? We can work something out there, yes. Again, this is very conceptual. So once we get into more development of the, of the plant, we can finalize all the auxiliary spaces that require for that. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. I, I also see the last uh, par paragraph, the second last paragraph on your statement that says mm -hmm. that uh, you'll be exploring other sustainable measures as time goes on, one being um, the uh, tankless water heater, yes. and more efficient uh, forced air unit. So one thing I would say is you can definitely put the tankless water heater outside the house. Sure. It'll actually save you in, mm -hmm. in efforts trying to route the, route the flute through the property. Um, though, you know, I, I do want to note in here that um, describes the intent of the photovoltaics to be to follow the slope because I think it'll it'll it will harm the architecture of this building if it's sticking up yes so I just want to make sure that the photovoltaics still follow the roof roof line through and the chair yes we have limited ability under state law to um, dictate the appearance of photovoltaic systems and so we're limited in what we can do. So we can certainly reflect that that's our intent, but I don't think we would be able to require them to do so. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Through the chair, <clears throat> just a quick question for staff. And <clears throat> um, I know I should know this, but as we were just discussing the area in which the water heater may or may not be installed, um, when we're, you know, looking at the project and we're looking at the plans and we're voting on this one way or another, my understanding was we should pretty much always know where everything is and not that it's going to, you know, possibly be here or possibly be there. I mean, I understand building, you know, things 
you know, they kind of get moved a little bit, but um, <clears throat> but that just seems to me to be a, a bit vague. Uh, I mean, am I am I off base on this, or or has it just been this long since we've had a meeting? But <laughs> again, it depends on the the system, right? It depends on whether it's tankless or tank water heater. Right. So that's still an option that we're exploring, and you know we can approve one way or the other. What I'm trying to say is you can approve or we can identify that closet or dedicate that closet for a tank water heater. But as we move forward, you know, my clients say, hey, I might want an inst instantaneous hot water heater. You know, th in that case, then that, that proposed plan or approved plan is no longer applicable. So again, you know, I, I don't think it's a major issue. No, I'm not saying it's a major issue, but yeah. I'm just <coughs> trying to be trying to be clear so that in my mind I know what yeah. what I'm going to be voting right. on, so that I don't sure. I don't want to vote on something that I'm not sure of. Okay. So is that and, uh, <coughs> is that pretty much? Staff would normally be looking for the the plans that are before the planning commission to address all of the zoning issues in the municipal code. And so sometimes the equipment is going to move from one place to another. And as they go through the process of doing their construction drawings, especially in order to comply with tier one, sometimes they are going to have to make some alterations. Mm -hmm. But an example of the kind of thing we would be looking for, for example, would be like the washer and dryer, because we wouldn't normally allow them to move the washer and dryer into the garage and then block the required parking. Right. So staff is normally going to look for certain things that impact the zoning code and look closely for those things and make sure they comply. So that would back, normally be our expectation. And as it comes back to me now, I would assume that the building inspector, as things are going along, would obviously. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. You can take your seat. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm going to open up public comment. If there are any members of the public who would like to speak on this? Seeing none, public comment is now closed. We'll bring it back to the Commission for discussion or voting. I've got a question for staff, especially the chair. <clears throat> the, uh, the first thing in the report describes the, the demolition permit <coughs> scope of work was grossly exceeded. And during the meeting tonight, it's not possible to tell why that happened. But it looks like the contractor was out of control. Does the city have some reason or some idea as to how the city will know that the contractor will be under control when it builds the project and it won't be substantially different than these plans? I think the best answer to that question is that the construction of the new home is going to require many um, inspections every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And so our building inspectors will be out on the site and reviewing every aspect of construction. Um, that is somewhat different than the original permit for this project, which was related to, um, you know, foundation repair and termite damage and those types of things, where you'd have very limited inspections and oversight. We wouldn't expect a contractor to go so far out of scope on something where the building inspector is on site regularly. Thank you very much. That's a good answer. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no more questions, do I have a motion? Through the chair. Commissioner? I will uh, make a motion we approve use permit 12-008 based on findings of fact 1 through 7, conditions of approval 1 through 27. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is approved. There's a 10-day appeal period. Thank you.